So I'm going to be talking about project life cycle today. First, a quick introduction. Um, who am I? Uh, I am the former VP of Finrac. I believe in a role of leadership that involves continuing developing other leaders. And so last year, I stepped down from that to make sure that other people step into that role and that those roles can rotate. And that's a common thread at Apache. You'll see leadership means raising other leaders. Um, I am a PMC member of the Apache Community Develop, which, which is the project Sharon just presented. Um, and I'm a mentor for weeks in the IPMC. The IPMC is the incubator, and I will be talking more about the incubator in this talk. What I do there is I help a project that wants to come to Apache and is in the process of coming to Apache learn about the Apache way. And weeks is actually a Chinese podling. There are no podlings that are really from a certain country. There are no projects that, are, that belong to a certain company, a country, but oftentimes they come from a company that is located in a country um, and are dominated by people from that country. And in this case, it's, it's a project that's dominated by Chinese people and they're trying to bring in people from other countries and other companies as well. I'm also a board member. Uh, I was elected this year. I'm a fairly new board member. And uh, I'm giving a workshop tomorrow on Apache FinRack CN, the cloud native re-architecture of FinRack. If you guys are interested in that, come tomorrow. So we've already heard about what the Apache Software Foundation does, but I just wanted to reiterate, we are open source software for the public good. It is our goal to make software that helps people in some way. And in order to do this, we have a certain structure as to how projects move through our foundation. And I'm going to go through them kind of in reverse order. If a project is sort of done with its life cycle, it goes through the attic. I'll tell you about the attic first because it's probably the least interesting part of the foundation. Um, top level projects are what we've spent most of today talking about. Those are the projects that are currently actively producing software and that have earned the right to do that under our name without any, without any extra check. I will spend a little bit of time on that, but we also spent a lot of time talking about that today. I will not spend too much time on that. What I'm gonna spend most of my time talking about is incubation. And you see on the right, the little egg there, that's our, that's our logo for incubation. You can imagine like a clutch of eggs and a chicken hatching the eggs. So uh, that's where our projects, that's where new projects enter the foundation. Some pro it's, it's where most new projects enter the foundation. There are exceptions to that. Um, but it's where I would recommend any new project. And I enter the foundation through an incubating product uh, project. A lot of people come in via the routes that Joan and Sharon presented that is coming to an existing project. But I was on a project that was then brought to the foundation and learned about the foundation through that project. So the attic first. What is the attic? Well, the attic is where we put the code that's of projects that are kind of done. And we spent a lot of time talking about community today, but sometimes a community falls away from a project. There are many reasons that might happen. Maybe a certain technology is no longer the current technology for solving certain problems. Maybe it's um, overtaken by other technologies. Maybe the community lost interest and failed to do what I mentioned earlier, grow leaders into new positions um, in those projects. Um, what the attic does is it provides a resting place for that code. That is, the code doesn't just go away. It's still available for users to, to pick up. Um, and it provides a way of, of making the information that this project is no longer being maintained clear. The user mailing lists stay around. If people want to go onto the user mailing list and answer each other's questions, they can do that. But um, there is no mechanism there for taking uh, new changes into the code. Currently, there are 49 projects in the attic. This is the number of projects that over the course of 20 years have reached their end of life at the foundation. And why do we do this? Well, I mentioned earlier, nothing is forever. There are some projects that have a very long lifespan. Tomcat, HTTPD are very good examples of, of projects that live a long time. But some projects, just don't, and that's okay, that's normal. We all know about software. We know that software can sometimes, not always, but sometimes have a very short lifespan, and it's important to be transparent about that and to accept that and to make sure that there's a way um, to publish that information and make, uh, and, and, uh, make it public. 
So how does a project enter the attic? Well, an at a project that enters the attic from being a top level project. So um, a top level project has a PMC, that's a program management committee that is responsible for the management of that committee. The name says it all. So the PMC, the best way for a project to enter the attic is for the PMC to say basically, we're done. They vote on it on the list. And we talked about voting earlier. They vote on it on the list. And then if the vote goes through, then they, they submit a resolution to the board. And the board then says, okay, and uh, asks that the attic take it on. Sometimes a project lose, loses the activity of its PMC. The PMC simply stops responding. And then the board asks, is anybody there? We hear cricket. <laughs> And then we uh, decide without the help of the PMC to move it to the attic. So now let's get to the more interesting and the funner part, the top level project. These are the 203 PMCs or 350 projects that are managed by the PMCs that the Apache Software Foundation um, provides the umbrella organization for. And we're very proud of our projects and I hope that's come out. Um, we are cutting edge. We're the best of the best, and we, uh, we're very wide ranging. We cover things from big data through IoT, through core banking. Uh, we're international. I mentioned earlier there are podlings, there are, there are projects that start in China and then spread to the rest of the world. Um, we've gotten a lot of message cues from, from China. Uh, the, there's a lot of projects from the US, and I would like to see more projects coming from Latin America because you guys also have problems that you're trying to solve and important ideas on how to solve. And those are valuable and the rest of the world benefit from that too. So what do we have there? Well, we've already talked about it a little bit. We have 200 top level, uh, 200 committees, 203 to be precise, 350 projects under those committees. We have 65,000 contributors. That's the number of people that, who have contributed code to some project at any time. That's, uh, you can see that basically through GitHub. Count your contributors there. We have 7,000 committers. Committers are people who have received the right to submit code to the repositories without extra barriers. What are our services? Well, we've gone through this a little bit already, but I'll go through it again. Um, we have infrastructure. Infrastructure provides things like uh, GitHub, also with archiving outside of any dependency on, on other organizations. We have legal and brand. They, legal and brand help uh, our projects to um, protect their, their IP and to defend against any um, legal attacks. Sometimes um, we have just questions that people want to answer that want answered about, about licensing. Legal also takes those on. We have conferences. So just last week, some of us were at ApacheCon. That's a service that we provide to our communities to organize those conferences so people can come together and see each other face to face. We have fundraising, which provides the funds for all of the, these things that I'm listing here. We have marketing. Um, marketing is, uh, provides the stickers, for example, for the projects, or if there are media queries that come in, marketing then directs them to the projects. And before that, explains to reporters about um, how the, the Apache Software Foundation is structured and what the PMTs do. We have security response. It's also already been mentioned in an earlier talk uh, that provides guidelines and also education to the projects on what happens when a, when an issue is uh, submitted to a project, how, uh, how to go through that. And we also just make sure that those things are responded to. So that's also a service to our users. And just recently, and Gris is right there, we have diversity and inclusion support. Um, we are working on improving the uh, diversity of our projects and we are uh, measuring that and looking for, for ways to support our communities to make it easier for them to attract committers that they have in the past not been able to attract or that they have unintentionally um, pushed away. So we're looking for information on that, on, on how we can improve ourselves. So now onto the fun part, well, all of it's fun. Um, but here's, here's sort of the more central part of my talk and that's the ASF incubator. What is the incubator? Oh. 
<laughs> what is the incubator? Well, the incubator is, among other things, itself a community. So when we count 203 projects, the incubator is one of those projects. There are, is the same processes of promoting people to um, the PMC and the incubator, but people who contribute to the incubator are themselves mentors of other projects. So I'm a contributor to the incubator because I mentor a project called Weeks. We are, the incubator is a place in which communities are located on their way into the Apache Software Foundation. So let's say that you have a project that already has a community around it. Um, you have this idea about how you want it to develop. You can take that project to the Apache Software Foundation with the developers and uh, just the general and, and other kinds of non-code contributors who are working on that project. Then you can come to the Apache Software Foundation and say, I want to be, I want my project to be part of the foundation. And then you bring that community into the, into the incubator. So it is a community of community. And I've already mentioned we provide mentoring. So what do we have now in the incubator? Currently we have 47 projects. We have 85 mentors. And the average time period that a project spends at the Apache Software Foundation is somewhere between one and two years. Now, this can be much larger in some cases. Some projects have a, a lot of IP that they need to move in. It can be very difficult. Some projects take a longer time to develop their communities. This is okay. This is allowed. It's, as long as you're making progress, we're not going to kick you out. We want you to stay with us, and we want, you to, we want to help you move your project forward through the incubator. We bring out roughly 10 releases per month, and while, the pro while a project is in the incubator, those releases are sort of incubator releases rather than Apache XYZ releases. And we vet those releases for licensing problems um, and et cetera. So what does that mean? Well, one of the things that Apache offers our users is a sort of a guarantee that you can take this code and you can extend it, and you can build other applications on it, and you can sell your product. You can sell your product um, to users, you can create software as a service, or you can create desktop applications, either way. In order to guarantee that, we also have to make sure that the project is Apache licensed, but also that any dependencies of the project are Apache licensed. Now, this can be a difficult process, and it can be a learning curve for, for projects coming into the Apache Software Foundation. So one of the, the forms of mentoring we provide is helping podlings learn about those requirements, recognize where they might have problems, find ways of solving those problems. That can be difficult, uh, but it's, it's mostly a technical problem. I think the more interesting problems are the people problem. And that, that's where we get to learning the Apache way. Now, this is a new mode of economic activity, really. This is a new way of thinking about sharing your work with others. And there are various principles that can be a little counterintuitive at first that um, we spend time teaching and transmitting inside of the incubator. We call this sort of mode of working together the Apache way. And there are also ASF policies, which are related to the Apache way. We also help toddlings to learn about these policies. So how do you get into the incubator? You, you, you want to get into the incubator and then you want to get out of the incubator as a top level project. Getting into the incubator involves several steps. First thing you want is to find a champion. That's somebody who is currently a member of the incubator who will step in and say, hey, I think this is a good idea. Let me suggest this formally to the community. Then you need to draft a proposal and hopefully your champion will help you draft that proposal. But there are a couple of things that go into a proposal. One of the things is kind of obvious. What does your project do? So for Beam or for Finneract earlier, Joan showed us each project has a short description of what that project is for. That's going to be on your draft. But your draft proposal is also going to include who are your contributors? Who are you bringing in? It's also going to include what do you think the challenges are that you are going to have to overcome in the process of becoming a PLP? So what kind of licensing issues do you think you're going to have to fix? Um, what kind of community issues do you maybe have to work on? Maybe your, your project is coming from 
contributors from all one company and you want to expand to people from other companies or other countries. Um, so you need to list the challenges that you think you need to overcome. There are a few other pieces of it too, but I think those are the most important parts. So the next thing you're gonna do is if people think this is a good idea, then some people are gonna start volunteering and saying, I'd like to mentor that project. You will, as a community, have the opportunity to decide who you want to mentor that project. You don't have to accept everybody who volunteers. I personally think that you should accept somewhere between three and five mentors and cut it there. I think that having too many mentors can become confusing because sometimes people have different ideas and it's better to, to have a, a smaller communication group. Once you've got that, the next step is for the incubator community to discuss the proposal and they'll identify any potential problems that maybe you haven't identified yet or ask questions. Um, and then they will vote on the proposal. And most, in fact, all that I know of, once they've gone through this discussion process and some of the adjustments, all proposals that I know of have been accepted. So we're actually very, very open to new projects coming in. So once the podling is in the incubator, what happens next? Well, we start setting you up. We create a mailing list for you. We, the infrastructure sets up uh, publishing to a, to a um, subdomain for your website. All of your contributors need to submit ICLAs, that's Individual Contributor License Agreement, in which they basically say, I'm going to give you IP, I'm going to, to license IP to you, um, and, you can, and your users can expect that anything that I contribute, um, that they have a right to use. Uh, if there's an existing code base, then that code base may belong to a company already, like Alibaba or Tencent or Google. Then that code base is provided, uh, granted to the Apache Software Foundation in the form of a software grant. And then we start actually moving code. And that can take different forms, sort of dependent on the project and what technologies that are, they're already using as to how to do that, but you'll work that out with us. Then there will be a repository transfer. Once you've got everything in, once you've informed your community of the new location and people started discussing on the mailing lists, what they will, the activities they will be engaging in, aside from the stuff that they were already doing with coding, maybe doing events, uh, marketing for around their project, um, they will start scrubbing the IP. So maybe there are some dependencies in there that you need to replace with other things. Maybe there's some things in there that you don't have a, a grant for that you need to either find the person it belongs to and get a grant for or replace. Then you start making releases under the Apache Foundation. Those releases will be checked by the incubator in order to make sure that they follow our policies. We're more forgiving with incubator or with podlings than we are with top level projects. So we, we try to make it, the learning curve easier. More, uh, as easy as possible. And you're going to be growing your community. And this is another area where ComDev steps in, but the incubator as well. And you will start owning your brand. What that means is when other entities maybe want to use your brand, that you will make sure that they're using it in a way that doesn't fit on it. So if you have, for example, let's take Beam again. If you have Apache Beam, maybe somebody comes in and tries to create something and call that Apache Beam too. Um, you as a, as a um, podling are responsible for telling them, hey, there's a misunderstanding here. You can call it powered by Apache Beam, but please don't call it Apache Beam because our thing is Apache Beam. When you start voting on releases, we've already covered this a little bit. You'll be doing plus ones, minus ones. If you have at least three plus ones and more plus ones and minus ones, then you can create the release and you need to allow 72 hours for a vote. I think Sam covered this, not sure. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the podling releases don't have to be perfect. You just need to improve them a little bit each time. Um, this is a, a process of learning by doing. You're not going to be able to do it perfectly the first time and that's okay and we need to accept that and find ways to, to bring the release out anyways because we're here to produce software. How do you grow your community? Well, 
unfortunately, Chris isn't here anymore, but uh, she gives a wonderful talk occasionally um, on how important and central documentation is to growing your community. If people want to enter your community, the first thing they're going to like John was showing you. Um, they're going to be trying to figure out what does this thing do? How does it do it? Then they're maybe going to, if you're especially lucky, dive into the internals and figure out how is the code structured. If, you're, if that is documented, then your project is more easily reached. You can also go to conferences, which I think is actually another form of documentation, just in-person documentation. You can go to people and have conversations with them about um, what your project does and try to convince them to come to you, to your project. You also need to recognize the people in your community. So if you tell, if, if you bring people in and say, hey, you've done some good stuff for us, we're gonna make you a committer, that motivates other people. That tells people, hey, this is a community in which I can grow, Think a community where I can learn things. So when you're ready to graduate from the incubator, the PMC decides that for them. Nobody else decides. Your mentor may give you a little nudge and say, hey, I think you're getting coming close. But at the end of the day, it's your decision to then go to the incubator and say, here's our proposal. We want to graduate. We think we're ready. They'll discuss it a bit. And then it'll be time for the IPMC vote, which is the same as the IPMC vote coming in. Discuss and then vote. And Finding votes are the people in, on the incubator. Once that happens, then it goes from there to the board. And the board votes also. So generally, in fact, I've never seen a case where it didn't happen. If the incubator um, proposes it to the board, then the board accepts it. And then we can say, welcome, there's a new, uh, there's a new podling, or there's a new top level project. And one podling less, in fact. Uh, at that point, marketing also gets involved um, and you can be involved in, in drafting announcements. This is, uh, our purpose at Apache is to make the world a better place by creating code for the public good. This is how we, this is the process. I just want to acknowledge um, a lot of this content comes from Justin McLean, um, who is the VP of the incubator. If you have any, we're going to have questions here, but if you have any questions after this, you can also send them to the general administrator. 